Sonic Frontiers had been in development since the dawn of man. Delays, speculation, we've seen previews, we've seen updates, we've even seen the game look like complete ass. But on November 8th, the game was finally released. Did Sonic Team make history, or is it another failure to add to the books? With Sega's stupid decision making and constant rushing of employees, can Sonic Team and Takashi Azuka pull through? I don't know, but it looks pretty fun. Oh man, look at this world! Look at this running! Look, I'm, I'm playing the game! I'm actually playing the game, and it's not crashing! You can do all these combos. It's a very small skill tree, and a lot of the moves are easy to exploit, but it's fun when the bad guy goes boom! These bosses are not half bad. There's a decent variety to fight. Sonic controls very nicely. It's not stiff. It feels like you have an actual level of freedom. Running around, exploring, doing these easy as fuck side quests, hitting shit until it goes boom, this is the game at its best. A lot of the things you do on their own aren't that exciting, but because you get them done so quickly, it's easy to do new things back to back. It keeps the pacing efficient. It's so fun. Like 80% of the time. Uh, we're gonna get into the bad stuff. Pop-ins, glitches every now and then, somewhat repetitive gameplay since a lot of it consists of just collecting enough tokens to advance the story. One of the biggest problems with the game are the cyberspace stages. Remember when I said Sonic didn't control stiff at all? Yeah, just forget about that. I don't know whose idea it was to change the physics, but for some reason, some godforsaken reason, you go from buttery smooth controls to you basically fighting the controls. You will fall into a pit or make a wrong turn so often because it feels like the physics just work against you. And that sucks because these stages also want you to do some precise platforming and it just does not work. Sonic just doesn't want to make the fucking jump. Another disappointing aspect was its constant reuse. It was bad enough that we almost had no new original levels but there are only four cyberspace areas that spread across multiple different stages and out of the five open zones, three of them are the exact same location. And the last two zones in that location are surprisingly short. When I beat the third zone, I thought that there was going to be a lot more to show, but all of a sudden the game was already about to end. Like, I thought it was just getting started. This game is not perfect by any means. I would go as far as to say as this game is a deeply flawed experience. But for some reason, I just kept playing. This game has a lot of problems, big and small. There are so many issues you can look at, but yet despite all that, it's still pretty fun. <laughs> it's fun killing enemies despite its very limited skill tree and basic combos. Even though cyberspace on a technical level controls like someone jabbed a steering wheel up Sonic's ass, I'm still eager to S rank each mission to perfect my time. And it's still fun to explore the open world. If Breath of the Wild has every path to be a new adventure, Sonic Frontiers has every path you take rewards you for just fucking around. It's okay that the game is a collectathon because because looking for new paths earns you tokens to advance the game. One of the main things that kept me going was its story. This game takes great strides to tell an engaging narrative with an interesting lore, but the real draw is its dialogue. For the first time in a while, the characters are actually likable. They have their own thoughts, motivations, and dynamics. It's genuinely endearing to hear Knuckles and Sonic bicker like siblings, or Amy and Sonic act like actual friends. Mind you, this isn't revolutionary storytelling. It's not mind-blowing but it does take on the monumental task of not making my ears bleed every time someone speaks, so hey, I'll give it that. The final act was pretty weak, though. It was kind of weird to have the final boss just be, um, Ikaruga. It's not perfect, but it was pretty entertaining, and I'm really hoping going forward there's more stories like this. So now the question on everybody's mind. Is the game good? Yes! Yes, it is so good! But not by much. I mean, like, okay. I think Frontiers is a good game in its own right, but I do think a lot of what makes it special really comes down to how attached you are to the franchise itself. This game in a lot of ways is a response to a lot of criticisms that were thrown at the series in the last decade. Bad writing, poor characterization, Sonic's weird voice. There was a line from Tails that blatantly addresses how shit of a character he was for the longest time. Do not be mistaken, this game was made for the fans, and that's great. It's great that this game knows its audience. But what about the other side of the spectrum? The casual player. Let's say you're just a casual gamer who doesn't get caught up in Sonic Media and just wants to have a fun, single-player, open-world game to play. How would it rate? <laughs> I asked myself this question too. Like, what does this game have over other open worlds? My initial answer was... Well, nothing. Like, of course I'm gonna play it. I'm a fucking dumbass Sonic fan. But even someone like me wouldn't try to oversell it. From the sense of freedom, to the content, design, in my opinion, games like Breath of the Wild and Grand Theft Auto are just simply better. It sounds mean, but it's true. You are getting more out of paying 60 bucks for them than you would for Frontiers. Then I started to think, like really think. What about this game stands out? And I think I kinda got it. 
you're not gonna like what I have to say, but this is the best I got. Sonic Frontiers, I think, is a very good first open world. Open world games for some people may come off as daunting or maybe not because you've already played some by now but if you're just starting out frontiers does a good job in helping you dip your toes into the genre the world is split into sections so it's not too overwhelming besides some challenges here and there the game as a whole is not too hard the combos are pretty easy to perform the missions are pretty straightforward the game compared to most AAA open worlds is pretty short i know a lot of what i'm saying sounds like negatives and they totally can be but it also allows this game to be more approachable and easy to pick up which is why I think a lot of us kept playing the game even when we ran into noticeable flaws. Sonic Frontiers is not a masterpiece, but I don't think anyone was really expecting it to be. Sonic's reputation for the longest time had been so fucked that a lot of us didn't really care how flawed the game was as long as it could stand on two feet. What's important is that it brought back Sonic, and I don't mean that in the game critic, oh, Sonic is back because it was the first good game to come out since uh, 1942. No, I mean the writing, the story, the tone, they all feel right. These feel like the real characters, or at least a version of them that we can be proud of, and that is where my respect lies. After everything the series had been through up to this point, the game didn't need to be perfect. It didn't need to win game of the year, or be groundbreaking, or a genre-defining title, or anything of that nature. All it needed to do was be a fun game from beginning to end. And for that reason, I like it just the way it is.